Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at Chapter 18, Managerial Accounting Concepts and Principles. So we're going to start off with the purpose of managerial accounting. So managerial accounting basics. Managerial accounting provides financial and non-financial information for managers of an organization and other decision makers. So man managerial accounting, I want you to remember first off, is for management. So the management is the decision makers, are the decision makers of the company. Managerial accounting is the idea of gathering information for management to do what management needs to do, which is to make decisions. As opposed to financial accounting, which is what we have been doing so far, which is generally geared towards external users, such as investors and creditors. Now, managerial accounting is going to start with much of the same information. So the data that we are going to put in there, that we put in through the financial data process, the gathering of the data, the day-to-day -day transactions, that we used to make the financial statements and the financial statements themselves will be a big part of the managerial accounting process, but the managerial accounting process can then reformat that information into a different way, any way that they think is best used for them to make decisions. So that's the key. Anytime you think of managerial accounting, you want to think of the manager making decisions for the company and the, the idea is that we're going to get information formatted in such a way for management. That means that the practice of management accounting is not as defined as financial accounting. There's not as specific rules out there. But just like any practice, any profession, there are best practices. So management accounting is governed more by best practices than by a formal set of rules such as generally accepted accounting principles. We're going to look at what works best what gives the best results, what leads to the best decisions, that is what we're going to do in managerial accounting and how we're going to format it. So the idea of managerial accounting is that we are trying to make long-term decisions and we're trying to run the company efficiently. So if we're talking about the uh, top level management, they are generally geared towards long-term decisions, whereas lower level management, what we would think of is geared at the day-to-day -day operations. So if we're thinking about the overview, the long-term type of planning processes, we're going to have the same idea as any type of long-term plan, which would be that first we want to plan the strategy, then we want to implement and uh, set controls on the strategy as it goes through the process. And then once the uh, implementation is over, then we want to get feedback and we want to evaluate how that process went uh, and compare it to what we think the plan should have been then of course we'll plan it again. So much of the accounting is going to be cyclical in that nature. Of course the managerial accounting is going to have decisions that may not be as cyclical, but meaning we may be implementing new types of processes and trying to and, and new procedures, but the accounting cycle will be cyclical. So when we implement two new information, our goal of course is to judge how that information will be, see if we made uh, a good decision and make as good a decision as we can based on the information we have, then evaluate in terms of how did the results come out in comparison to what we thought should happen, then of course make new plans for the next go around. So the nature of managerial accounting, if we, if we compare managerial accounting to financial accounting in this format, then we can see that financial accounting in terms of users is geared towards external users, meaning investors, creditors, other external users. Remember that the managerial accounting, by contrast, is geared towards internal users, meaning management. So remember that we're going to use a lot of the same data for the two, but financial accounting, because it's geared towards external users, is much more defined, and external users have different needs. The external users', users needs are usually to get a full picture of the financial statements as a whole, whereas the internal managers' needs are maybe geared towards specific segments and specific areas of concern or specific plans towards the future. So although we'll use the same data, they have different goals for the use of that data. Number two, purpose of the information. For financial accounting, what we've done up to this point is explain um, external users make investment, credit, and other decisions. So why do we have the information for financial? Why are we making the financial statements? Primarily for external users and the external users as investors it needs to have it to be standardized and give a holistic view of the company so that they can compare it to prior periods as well as other companies. On the managerial side, the whole purpose, once again, is to help managers uh, make planning and control decisions. 
So when we think about the managerial side, once again, what's the purpose of managerial accounting for, um, what's the purpose of managerial accounting? You always want to think it's for management. It's for the decision making of management. Therefore, there, we don't have any controls that we have under financial accounting or not as many. We're not as heavily regulated. We're doing whatever gathering or formatting of information will help most with the decision making for management. Uh, flexibility of reporting. Structure under financial accounting, structure often controlled by generally accepted accounting principles, otherwise known as GAAP. And so that will be highly structured, especially for publicly traded companies. They're required to format the information in accordance with GAAP. Once again, we have to have that for publicly traded companies because investors need to be able to compare from company to company and from uh, period to period and have a high level of conformity without a lot of needed investigating. Whereas on the internal use, however, management may have certain reasons why they want to report something differently. They may want different information. And since it's for internal use, they can format it any way they like. And that's going to be the idea. So that for that reason, managerial accounting depends on best practices, not necessarily on rigid rules and regulations so much. So timeliness of the information often available after an audit is completed for the financial accounting. So financial accounting for publicly traded companies required to have an audit. The financial accounting will have to go through the audit process. So that means if you're talking about a year end in December year end, you're going to have to format all that information. You're going to have to then review it, get it audited, then issue the financial statements. The formal financial statements will not then be available until after that process has been completed. As opposed to financial, for the managerial accounting, however, where they don't need the complete audit to be completed before they can gather the information. They can start putting information together, making decisions on it in a, a more timely fashion if they so choose. Once again, the information will be much the same, but we don't have to wait till the audit is done before we start using that information to make decisions on the managerial side. Time uh, dimensions. So for financial accounting, we're thinking the past historical information with some predictions. So financial accounting is about reporting on past information. That's what the financial statements are. This is what balance sheet. This is where we are at a specific point in time. Income statement. This is what has happened over a specific time period. And uh, of course, the users of that information will be trying to analyze the past to make investment or credit decisions in the future, the external users. But the information is geared towards the past. And of course, for the managerial side, the whole purpose is to future predictions. So once again, we are going to use past numbers. But uh, for the managerial side, we may be looking towards the future and thinking about future predictions more because we're thinking about future planning. So if many pro uh, projections and estimates, uh, more estimates will be in there and we'll be thinking about different options in terms of future events. Focus of the information for financial accounting we're thinking about the whole company for financial accounting as a whole. So when I'm when we're thinking about investors or creditors and they want to know what do they want to know? How are you doing as a whole? Are we going to get our investment back? Are is the company as a whole growing? Whereas in terms of the managerial accounting, we may be thinking about specific project, specific information, specific plans towards the future. Therefore, we're going to have to put that information into different formats to achieve those different goals. Nature of the of the information uh, for financial accounting, obviously it's all monetary. That, that's what the format of the financial statements are in. They're in terms of dollars and cents. For managerial accounting, it is mainly monetary. Again, we're going to use a lot of the same information. We might just format it in a different way. But we might have different types of information as well. And our goal is to try to quantify most of the time for managerial accounting. We want to quantify it because quantifiable data, data in terms of numbers, can be compared a little more, bit more easily, but that may not always be the case. We may be using some other quantifiable data, such as surveys and, and things like that. And uh, so we may have data in the managerial side that is not all dollars and cents. We're trying to try to measure different types of things to measure the performance of our company. And of course, what we're trying to do is improve the overall net income and revenue, but we may be using other measures other than dollars in order to do that, meet that goal. Fraud and ethics in managerial accounting. 
Fraud affects all uh, all businesses and it's costly. So in 2014 report to the to the uh, nation from the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners estimates that the average US business lo loses 5% of its annual revenue to fraud. So fraud's going to be a big issue in any kind of company and as the company gets larger then uh, the likelihood of fraud could increase just because of the size of the organizations and the different opportunities that may be there for fraud and the this association that people may feel towards larger companies than uh, smaller companies as companies grow then we need to implement more internal controls in turn in in order to safeguard against fraud and that's going to be of course one of the things that management needs to be aware of why do they need to be aware of it well uh it's going to affect the bottom line is one clear reason that management needs to be aware of fraud. So if, if management's trying to increase revenue and be as efficient as possible, then they need to be aware that fraud can be very costly in that. And if we think about what fraud is, it's basically someone is uh, deceiving the company and acting in such a way to have a personal benefit uh, from the company. So that could be something like stealing it could be manipulating information to uh, get a bonus and, the, and this type of thing. And so our goal here is to implement internal controls and try to uh, mitigate the fraud and lessen the fraud, catch fraud in early as possible. And in so doing, we will increase the revenues and uh, do have a better business and a more healthy business in the process.